this is a, a part three of the series, God is Not Bipolar, <laughs> okay? If you haven't heard anything of this, you need to go back and listen to the first two because we really can't do it justice and summarize everything that we've been talking about, okay? But really, we're talking about the true nature of God, and the true nature of God is that He's good, but He's also only good. He's not good sometimes and sometimes not, but He's always good and only good. And most people know that, you know, as an echoing fun thing that we say at church, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good kind of thing, you know. But truthfully, you know, when things go wrong, we start looking to blame shift and we start looking like, oh, well, what went wrong, what went wrong? And sadly, a lot of people in legalism and religion has decided that sometimes they're just going to put that blame on God. And that's the one thing that we never do. That is the one thing that we never question is the goodness of God, because that will distort our view of God, and if we have a distorted view of God, it will affect our relationship with Him, and it will affect how we receive from Him. It will affect how intimate and how close you can get to Him, not because of Him, but because of your, your view of Him, and it will affect how you receive from God. Because if I don't if it's not a firm foundation that God is good all the time and only good, then I'm not sure sometimes if he's going to come through for me. If, he's going, if it's his will to heal me. To heal me if it's his will to provide for me. I'm, I'm not going to be 100% sure because there's cracks in that foundation of the goodness of God. And we said it's like gravity. You know, when an airplane crashes, there's thousands of reasons why that could have happened but the one thing they never question is gravity gravity didn't turn off didn't fail didn't change for a moment you know it could be other things so we're not going into why bad things happen that is not the the purpose of the series the purpose of the series is to establish the one thing that we never question which is the goodness of god he's always good and only good amen all right maybe you're not convinced yet hopefully by the end of this you will be because this is part of three <laughs> It's the end. So if by the end of this, you don't believe God is good and only good and always good, you know, you need to listen to it again. And you need to get with God. But I believe today we're going to um, uncover some of this stuff. You know, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Let's go there. <laughs> Pastor Greg Moore was preaching yesterday at this... Um, pastors and leaders conference and he's saying you know we we live in an era of information overload we have so much information so much teaching so much just at our fingertips you can find anything out right the date to any event you know any anything you just hey google hey siri Uh uh-oh you gotta be careful when you say that because all everybody's phone because all of a sudden goes what what can you say you know and, um, and they're listening now, you know. <laughs> so, so we have so much information, but crazy is that in, in Christianity, you know, there's also too much information. And let, me, no, let me back up. Not, not that it's bad to have too much information about the Word of God, but the corresponding action and application of that information is way too little. In other words, you know way, way better than what you do, than how you act, and then how you believe, right? If we did like 10% of what we know, we'd probably be in a way better place than we are now. Think about that, right? We have too much information. You know, sometimes like you see people going, you know, just like conference to conference, teaching to teaching, you know, like they're like just going from one place to another, always just getting, you know, everything they can. And it's amazing. That is great. But it should show up in their lives, right? Because it's not what you know. It's how much of what you know you actually live out. Otherwise, we're just hearers of the word and not doers. So sometimes we got to just like, okay, let me go back to the basic. God is good. So Romans 12, 2 says... Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And check this out. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good 
and pleasing and perfect. Okay, so question for you. How is the will of God for us? Sometimes good? Well, right there it says it's good, it's pleasing, and it's perfect. His will for us is always good, always willing, and always perfect. But the, the beginning of that verse clearly says that to be able to really know this, to know, not in your mind, but to know this in your heart, you need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, if you're not transformed by renewing your mind to the word, you might have some questions about, is God's will good? Is God's will perfect? And is God's will pleasing for me? Does that make sense? Yeah. To the, to the un, untransformed mind, to the unrenewed mind, it is not 100% sure that God's will is perfect, pleasing, and good. But to the transformed mind, to the renewed mind, the transformed person, then that person can know the perfect will of God. Perfect, good, acceptable, and pleasing will of God. Are you following? So no wonder some people have a lot of questions. No wonder some people are, are saying like, well, I'm not sure if God is good. You know, I think he put that cancer on this person, and I think he caused that earthquake over there, and I think he caused that tsunami over there. Let me tell you, that is a person whose mind is not renewed and who is not being transformed by the word of God. Because when you renew your mind and you're transformed by the word of God, it says then you can know that God's will is good, perfect, and pleasing. Are you with me? Can you turn off the winter, please, Carlos? We don't want any penguins in, this, in the service. We have enough humans. Thank you. I was like, some, some of your thoughts are freezing, you know, like the wheels. We need the wheels to turn. <laughs> are you with me on this? So no wonder many people question the goodness of God. No wonder many people aren't sure that he's good and always good. It's because they haven't been renewed. Okay. So that also tells me one thing. Whenever I doubt or question that God is good, that his will is good and perfect and pleasing, that right there tells me there's an area in my life that I need to renew my mind. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I love these little little cues that kind of help us backtrack and, you know, it's kind of like when you're feeling stressed out, you know, hold on, feeling stressed out is, a, is an alarm, it's a, if I pay attention to that, it's an alar alarm to my thoughts, what am I thinking, okay, now I, now I know what to do with stress, I can look at my thoughts, like, okay, that's why I'm thinking about all this stuff, I need to give it to God, right, and then I could be in peace, right, yeah. so whenever you question that God is good. Whenever that doubt comes in, is he really good, right? Like the serpent said in the beginning. Is he really good? Does he really want that? You know, is his best interest really in his mind for you? You know, is God good? Is his will perfect? Is his will pleasurable, you know, pleasing? Like, does he have your best interest in mind? Like, whenever that question is, whenever a situation happens that makes me question that, I can go back and know I need to renew my mind about something. So, Holy Spirit, what do I need to renew my mind about so that I can be transformed and know your perfect will? Because I, that will is, is good and it's pleasing. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay, so God has a good will for us. We can know that will, okay? He wants us to know that will, but we can only know it through being transformed, and that only happens by the renewing of our mind, okay? Um, we've been saying this for two weeks, three weeks. Says, My view and perspective of God will determine how I relate to him and how I receive from him. Okay, So what that tells me is that I need to also correct the perverted views about God in my life. I need to correct the perverted or distorted view of the nature of God that I have. Here's what happens. When, if you think somebody did you wrong, you're like 99.9% .9 sure, right? Like all the evidence points, points to that, like they did it, you know? And that hurt you and it put you in a bad place 
you know, maybe it caused you a bigger problem, it caused you a loss, maybe something, and, and that person did it, right? You think you could be intimate friends with them? All right. You can be fake friends with them. Right? <laughs> you can be fake friends with them. But, but you know, you, you can't trust them. You can't really open up to them. They're, they're not safe. Because why? Because they did you wrong. Right? Well, that's how many people feel about God. They're fake friends with God. But in the back of their mind, still, they still attribute to God that, they took a per- that he took a person that was dear to them. You know, they still attribute to God that you know He took away their prosperity and and their business. You know, and so they're fake friends. They know they should go to church, so they go to church. They know they should read the Bible and pray and act all holy. But but they know in the back of their minds, like He did me wrong. So I, it's like I can't get over that. You know, so therefore it puts a it throws a wrench into your relationship with God. You can't really be intimate with Him. And so, but, so you get that idea. Well, what happens? I want you to think about this. If that, if that person, what happens if one day you, let's just say that you happen to come across the, the videotape evidence that shows that it was somebody else who did that, what you thought they did, right? Like you, you just clearly see the evidence. You're like, oh my gosh, this is the video. I thought it was this person. This person wasn't even there. They didn't do it. It was somebody else. What does that do to you? Well, one of the things I think it will do is that it will, it will heal your heart from your offense to that person. They didn't do it. Oh, my gosh. Right? And it will restore intimacy. And that's what we're trying to get accomplished here with this teaching. It's not just the knowledge that God is good and only good because that's the right answer and don't you dare say anything different. No, that's not it. What we want is the restoration of your relationship with God when you can realize and say, wow, he didn't do it. What does that do? He didn't take your mom. He didn't take your dad. He didn't take your business, right? He didn't, he didn't hurt you. He didn't throw you into that situation. Like, he didn't do that to you. And when you realize it was not him, what does that do to you? It does the same thing. It heals your heart from the offense that you had against God, from the disappointment you had against God. And what it does, it, it restores that intimacy again. Like, Dad, I thought, I thought you did it. You didn't do it. I'm so sorry. I thought you did it. You see what I mean? So that's what we're trying to, to accomplish in this time is that your view and perspective of God will get restored so that there will be nothing blocking that intimacy with him, right? Because in the same turn, if you don't believe like he is that good, then how could you dare to put your faith out for something good for you? Right? If I don't believe he is always good, then I, I'm not really sure that he wants these things that good for me. So, correcting this perverted or distorted view of God will heal my relationship with Him and bring me to a more intimate place. Okay? Um, So, we talked about the Father. This is where it's going to get fun. I know. We talked about the Father. This is one of those teachings that I'm going to have to say a lot of, um, this is not what I'm saying. (laughs) Okay, so, warning. <laughs> um, we talked about the Father, okay? We, we said, you know, part of knowing God's nature is good is that He's a good Father. And He tells us right in the Word, He said, like, hey, if you, being evil, know how, know, know how to good, give good things to your children, how much more the Father, right? Like, He's, he's a perfect Father. He's going to give really, like, He's way better than you. So if you would never hurt your children, if you would never put sickness and pain on them, if you would never, you know, throw them out on the street so they would learn a lesson, like, like how much more the Heavenly Father is, is good, okay? And so we talked about the nature of the Father, yeah, so, so we understand that, that the Father is good, 
right? He's better than the best father you've ever known on this earth, right? But what we need to understand, too, is that there's a family, right? And, and again, this is not a teaching on the Trinity, okay? So this is not a teaching on the Trinity, you know. Another time we can, we can talk about the Trinity, but we do know that it's the three in one, right? The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You with me? Okay, right. In the beginning, God said, let us make man in our own image, right? Let us. Who's us? The Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are a picture of perfect unity, of a perfect family, right? It's the three in one. If you, see, if you see the Holy Spirit, you're seeing the Father. If you see the Father, you're seeing the Son. If you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. Like, that's how united they are, right? It's the perfect picture of a family. They, they said, let us create man in our own image and in our own likeness, right? So they created man. And then, you know, a few verses down in Genesis 1, 26, and then it goes on to ver- uh, chapter 2. Uh, he, he forms man, right? And then he's like, mm, it's not good for man to be alone. Are you with me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right? Okay, so it's not good for man to be alone. You know, uh, there, there's a play on words that I learned uh, from, I think it was Miles Monroe. He said, it, it's not good for man to be all in one. Now, that's not Greek or Hebrew or anything like that, okay? That's just a play on words. <laughs> I feel like we need to walk <laughs> carefully on here, okay? Like, I can't believe you, that's not, no. Okay, but it was all in one. It was, he said, it's not good for man to be alone. So the woman wasn't there, okay? But what did God do? God created man in his own likeness and image. That means with characteristics of, of, the, of the Trinity, okay? And he put him in man. Then he created, then, then he's like, okay, yeah, none of these are good uh, for you. And he said, um, all right, had him, you know, knock him in the back of the head, goes to sleep. I'm going to do something amazing while you're passed out, right? And he pulls out, right? And out of man, he pulls out and he creates this amazing woman, right? Wow. And he wakes up, he's like, holy moly, you know? <laughs> oh. Um, <clears throat> I want to suggest to you that when, when God did that, right, he also gave woman characteristics of the Trinity that man doesn't have. Okay, why? Well, functionally, you know, to start with, functionally, you know, man is the seed giver and woman is the incubator, right? Okay, man cannot incubate. I don't care how good your surgeries are. That's not what we're teaching about either, okay? (laughs) But it's all there, I'm telling you, it's all there. And he gives woman different characteristics of it, right? Because when the two become, when the the two get united, they become one, they become one flesh, right? So God is giving us the picture of the perfect family, right? The Trinity, right, is a picture of a per- perfect family. So when man is united to his wife, right, and then they have kids, right, it's, it's also a picture of family. God is about family. He created man because he wanted a family. Okay? So he gives man, you know, certain characteristics, and he gives women certain characteristics, you know, a, a lot of those functionally, but also, and I'm not making rules and saying that men can't be nurturing. That, that's not true, okay, because that's where you start going off wrong and, in paths that we don't need to go. But, you know, the woman does tend to be more nurturing just, just by nature. Why? Because she's the one that, f- first of all, feeds the baby with her own body. Okay? When the baby w- wakes up, you know, in the, or is eating, he's seeing mom's face, which is supposed to be a picture of God. Which is why when we as parents mess up, mom or dad, it's really important that we learn to apologize to our kids because we are giving them an image of Father God. Yeah. Yeah. That is why a lot of people have a hard time relating to the Father because they didn't have a good earthly father. That's just a fact. Like, I can't even hear the word Father, you know? So they, when they pray, you know, they normally address Jesus or the Holy Spirit. And until that heart wound of a father is healed, 
you know, what happens? They're able to see a good and perfect father, right? And know everything they were missing. Because it's the father's role to speak identity and to speak purpose and, and to speak value into the children. And it's the mother that nurtures, right? You know, it's interesting too, you know, it says in Genesis that he, he gave Adam a, a helpmate, right? And you know who, who Jesus said he was going to leave us? The helper. I'm going to say this now so we get out of the way. I am not saying that the Holy Spirit is a mother. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. I am not saying the Holy Spirit is a mother, okay? There are some weird doctrines out there, right? Well, they even make worship songs and they sing to the mother, and I'm like, oh, God. Okay, that's not it at all. You, you've missed it. You know, God the Trinity passed on these characters because he made us in his likeness and image, right? And it was all in one man, but then he got the woman too, so that together there would be a picture of God that would point and reflect his goodness. So when we ask our kids for forgiveness, you know what we're doing? We're restoring the standard. Right. Say, hey, I want you to know that what I did is wrong. That's not how it's supposed to be. And what we do, when they forgive us, we restore the standard so that that doesn't become a standard of how they see mom or how they see dad or how they relate to their Heavenly Father. Yeah. Are you following? Yeah. Okay. So I feel like it's very important that we address this part, you know, because we've talked about the goodness of the Father, but then we also need to address maybe mother wounds, because if you have a distorted view of what a mother is supposed to be like, you know, it, it's possible, again, I'm saying it's possible, it's not definite, that you might have a hard time relating to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is supposed to be the helper, right, the comforter. And if you in your life had certain wounds from your mom that weren't very comforting or very helpful or very nurturing, you might have a hard time relating to the Holy Spirit. I said might, okay? I'm not trying to make a rule book out of this. All right? The last thing we need is another one of those. But it is important that we address these things because they can be blocking us from receiving from the fullness of God. Okay, I'm going to look at my notes so that I um, stay in order. And so that I don't see your looks towards me. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so I have a question for you. This is just, just a question, okay? Right off the top of your head... Most of the times, when you pray, who do you address? Don't say it out loud. Just once you think. Father, Jesus, or Holy Spirit? Okay? I mean, you're like, hold on. Okay. <laughs> so... Nothing wrong with having a predominant one, okay? So let me, let me say this. Very important. There's nothing wrong if you only or always pray to the Father, okay? Um, um, nothing wrong. But there could, be, there could be a wound in your heart if you can't pray to the Holy Spirit, or if you can't pray to Jesus, okay? Again, I'm not saying it's wrong if you mostly pray to the Father, like, you know, if most of your prayers start with Father, and, and that's who you are addressing, and that's who you talk to throughout the day when you're praying, there's nothing wrong with that, but if you find that you can't, or you have a hard time praying or asking the Holy Spirit, or you find that you're having a really hard time asking Jesus, right? then there might be something there that you need to address in your heart. Am I being clear? Yeah. Yes? Okay, good, good. Because I don't want to confuse anyone. Oh, Pastor said that if I only pray to the Father, I got mom issues. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> but maybe you don't feel very close to the Holy Spirit. You're like, I just can't connect. I just, mm, it, it's hard. 
okay, then we need to, we need to look into that. Because there might be a, again, like, like with the Father, there might be a distorted perception or view of the Holy Spirit that might have been caused by mom that you need to forgive and restore so that you have no problem addressing the Holy Spirit. Now, let me say another thing. Neither the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit get their feelings hurt if you just pray mostly to one of them. (laughs) They're not insecure. Okay? But the ones that could be missing out on some of that is us. If all I do is Father, you know, protection, power, this, that, that, and, and, you know, and I realize, wait, why can't I connect with the Holy Spirit? Like, you know, maybe you, maybe you equate that to, you know, a weaker side because that's like, you know, like very emotional and, and kind of out of control. And, you know, you're just like a man and macho. And it's like, you know, that's like more for the artsy people. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, no, you're missing out on some of the amazing qualities of the Trinity. <laughs> See what... <laughs> <laughs> if you're having a hard time praying to Jesus, maybe you have a friend or a brother wound. Maybe a friend hurt you really bad. You know why? Because Jesus represents also friends and brothers in our life, you know? Maybe you see him as like, I don't need you. I have a father, you know? <laughs> okay. So... So if you feel disconnected or distant or uncomfortable, you know, praying to Holy Spirit, praying to Jesus, then you need to look into why you see that person different, right? And hear their heart. We don't want to um, miss out on that. Okay, so Father, protector, provider, he gives us identity, purpose, seed, vision, okay? Um, Matthew seven eleven. you know, that's where we talked about, you know, if uh, our, um, said if, if you then being evil, you know how to give good advantageous gifts to your children. How much more will your father who is in heaven, perfect as he is, give good and advantageous things to those who ask him? That's the Amplified. Okay. Um, Holy Spirit, John 14, 16 through 17. I'm going to read this out of the Living Translation. We're going to be for a few minutes here. It says, John 14, verse 16. It says, and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate. Who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. I want to read you the amplified version. It says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby. That he may remain with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive or welcome or take into their heart because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be with you. So see, there's something important about recognizing the Holy Spirit. And when we don't recognize the Holy Spirit, we're not connecting with the Holy Spirit for some reason. We could be missing out on, you know, wisdom. Like he's the helper, he's the comforter, he's the one that comes and heals our heart, right? He's the nurturer, he's the multiplier. You know, the Holy Spirit was in the beginning, he was hovering. Any helicopter moms were here? (laughs) He was hovering over the face of the earth. And then boom, power. Moms are powerful. Women are powerful. An intercessor, right? I mean, again, not saying men are not intercessors, but who, who do we mostly attribute, you know, the prodigals turning around and coming home? The praying moms and grandmas. Well, you know, it says the Holy Spirit's an intercessor, an advocate, a counselor, a helper. He never leaves us, never leaves us. I mean, who calls you 15 times a day? Mostly dad or mostly mom? 
Do you see how some of those characteristics, you know, are more prominent in women? Are you following me? Okay. Okay, so, comforter, nurturer, teacher. He's a teacher. He wants to teach us all things, you know. I know we, we homeschool, but, you know, my wife is a teacher in the house, you know. And there's a lot of teachers, you know, more women teachers than men teachers. You know, there's just, there's a strength to it. Not, again, not making a rule saying like, well, men should never be teachers. That's, that's dumb. That's not what I'm saying, okay. Comforter, nurturer, teacher, incubator. Wisdom and understanding. You know, have you heard, have you read Proverbs? Do you see how it mostly refers to her as wisdom and understanding? Her, she stands there. She's calling out to you. She, she, she. Why? Because the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they're a perfect family, perfect unity. And whenever your picture of mom or dad or brother has been wounded, distorted, or perverted, you know, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he wants, he'll want to steal from that fullness of accessing, you know, the Trinity, everything that God is and has for you. Again, I'm not saying that if you pray, you know, to the Father for comfort, he's not going to give it to you. That's not what I'm saying. But if you do have a wound from a mom that is offense. That does keep you in prison from certain things. Yeah. Yeah. Unforgiveness keeps us locked in, keeps us in prison. And we're missing out on something. And I don't want to miss out on anything because John 10, 10 says that Jesus came that I might have life and life more abundantly. So I want to always be renewing my mind and cultivating my heart because it's, it's out of my heart that flow all the issues of life. I want to be renewing my mind and cultivating my heart so that I can always, every day, grow into and experience more of the fullness of God, more of the abundant life. Because as I said in the beginning, we haven't seen it all and we haven't experienced it all yet. Paul said, I'm, I'm running the race, right? I'm still going. I haven't achieved it all. I've seen some amazing things, but there's more. Okay. And Jesus... He represents friends and brothers. And John 15, 13 says, There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. Right? What does the Bible say also? That we've been made co-heirs with him. Co-heirs. Right? So if you've been hurt by friends, you've been betrayed by friends, and if you've been hurt by brothers or sisters, you know, people that were kind of like co with you, right? It wasn't the father, it wasn't your mom, it wasn't an authority figure, it was a friend figure, it was a brother figure, right? Then it is possible that if you haven't healed that part of your heart, maybe that's the reason why you can't sing to Jesus. You know how you know that a lot of times people have told me, I have a hard time singing songs of worship about Jesus. People saying, like, I have a hard time singing songs about the Holy Spirit, you know? And, and the same thing with the Father. You're like, huh, I wonder why. You should, should look into that. <laughs> why? Because there's, there's some kind of wound in your heart that is not allowing you to connect with Father God, right, with the Holy Spirit, or with Jesus. And any kind of offense that we have in our heart, whether we know it or not, it keeps us locked in a prison about something that we shouldn't be but experiencing freedom about. You ready for this? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Jose, can you come? Um, we're going to pray. So we're going to spend the next five minutes, maybe, maybe six, maybe ten we're gonna pray okay so do me a favor just close your eyes okay and, and i want to ask this question if any of this has at all hit the nail in the head about father 
Son, Holy Spirit. Maybe maybe you could immediately relate, say like, oh, I know right away, you know, I don't have a good relationship with my mom and that's probably why I can't, you know, I have a hard time with the whole Holy Spirit thing, you know. If, if that's any any of you at all has, has connected any of these dots with, with something that might have happened in your life that is holding you back from this, and would you just raise your hand? I just want to get an idea of uh, what's what's in the room here. Okay. And then who else? Who else? Come on. Anybody else? All right. Okay. All right. That's, that's good. That's good. You can put your hand down. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pray. Okay. And we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. You know, we can all hear the Holy Spirit. We can all hear God. You can hear Jesus. <laughs> I got to make sure I say all three just in case. You're like, no, I can't hear him. <laughs> you can hear him, and he wants to speak to you. So, so first, I want you to just, you know, you've identified who do you pray mostly, so you probably don't have any, any problems there that we need to talk about right now. So think of who, who do you have the hardest time uh, connecting and praying to from the Trinity, Father, Son, or Holy Spirit, you know? And if it's two, just pick the hardest one, okay? And so Holy Spirit, I just ask you right now that you would reveal to each person. Why Holy Spirit? Why do we say Holy Spirit? Because we just read, Holy Spirit is the one that leads us into all truth, into all truth. So, So God right now, he's speaking to you and he's gonna show you, you know, um, if you ever saw the movie The Shack, you know, I was surprised when uh, they impersonated God as a woman, as a mom. And I understood at the end when he said, the reason why he came as a mom is because you couldn't handle a father right now. You know? And so it's very similar to, to what we're trying to explore right now. Bring up the keys a little bit. What we're trying to explore with with this is you have a heart wound, you have a, a traumatic experience from, you know, one of those three that is not allowing you to connect and experience everything there is from them, you know, that you're shutting out. So Holy Spirit, just ask you right now, would you show us So we're going to start with the Father. So just keep your eyes closed and we're going to pray. So if, 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 if you have a hard time praying to the Father, you know. Holy Spirit, do I have any heart wounds about my earthly father? Just ask him, ask him, Holy Spirit, do I have any heart wounds about my earthly father? going to hear. He, he's going to respond to you in your heart. You're going to hear him. Now ask him, how did he hurt me? When did he hurt me? And if you kind of hear or see the event when, when that wound happened, you know, now what we need to do now is is you need to choose to forgive because as, for as long as you don't forgive you, you continue to keep yourself in that jail so if it's a father you know just pray this say father dad I forgive you for hurting me I forgive you for not fulfilling your role as a protector as a provider forgive you dad for not giving me identity or for messing up my identity I forgive you dad for making me feel so insecure you know maybe 
maybe it was not maybe it was not directly your dad but it was a, a dad figure so if it was a dad figure if it was a, a coach if it was a, a teacher if it was a mentor if it was a pastor a youth leader you know just go ahead and forgive him in your heart right now and then if, if, if you've forgiven now bless them I'll say I, I bless you dad I bless you dad for putting I bless you dad I forgive you for putting pressure on me I forgive you for all these things but now I bless you so go ahead and bless them bless them bless them bless them now if it was your mom who hurt you you know maybe maybe you know I want you to know this the absence of a father or the absence of a mother is just as or more hurtful and so if it was your mom and your mom hurt you you know maybe you you realize you're having a hard time connecting with the holy spirit that that could be that could be the key right there that unlocks that connection with the holy spirit you know a lot of people can't um a lot of times they say like it's really hard for them to pray in tongues it's really hard for them to understand the things of the spirit it it could be that your mom your earthly mom hurt you or failed you in in some way or misrepresented God's heart for you so just ask God God you know Holy Spirit did my mom hurt me did my mom disappoint me did I have to take care of my mom Because if you had to take care of your mom or had to take care of your dad, you know, it doesn't put a lot of uh, confidence in trusting the Holy Spirit or trusting the Father because you've had a, a bad image of what they represent or what they look like. But the Holy Spirit is supposed to be the helper, the teacher, the comfort, the one that never leaves your side. So if it was mom, you know, just go ahead and just say, Mom, I forgive you. Mom, I forgive you for hurting me. I forgive you for abandoning me. I forgive you for for putting so much pressure on me. I forgive you for, for not meeting my expectations. And the thing is, we're none of our earthly parents are ever gonna fulfill our expectations because none of them are perfect but it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt us. It still hurt us. And especially if we grew up with parents that didn't know how to ask for forgiveness and point us to a perfect father. Just say, Mom, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. And today, I bless you and bless your mom. you to feel rushed but you know if you feel like there's more to this I really really want to encourage you that when you go home you spend time with God and you and you continue this you know because the Holy Spirit will show you where you are hurt and where you need to forgive and I just want to uh, pray one more time um, if you have a friend or a brother who hurt you who betrayed you this could be a friend someone you were in business with, a partner. A brother, a sister. They just did you wrong. They 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 hurt you, they disappointed you, they betrayed you. They abandoned you, they bullied you. You you thought more of them and then they didn't come through. They didn't, you know, like those things hurt. So if you, if, you, if you feel like you have a hard time connecting with Jesus, worshiping Jesus, praising Jesus, exalting Jesus, you know, if that's you, maybe, maybe you need to forgive a sibling or a friend. And so just ask the Holy Spirit, who do I need to forgive? When did they hurt me? And just forgive them. Forgive them because the one that 
gets unlocked, the one that comes out of the prison of unforgiveness is you. The one that will get to experience new freedom and new intimacy with God is you. This is the key that locks so many people in and that prevents them from experiencing the fullness of God. just name them, you know, say, I forgive you, brother, sister, I forgive you, friend, I forgive you, partner, I forgive you, teammate, I forgive you, and I bless them, say, I bless you, I release you, and I bless you, I release you, and I bless you with your eyes closed one more moment here's here's what i what i I want us to to be able to see i want you to look at that one whether it's the father the son or the holy spirit whichever one you were having the hardest time connecting with whichever one of them that you were having the hardest time connecting with praying to worshiping i want you to say to whether it's father son holy spirit i say show me how you really are show me how you really are the Father, whether it was Son, or whether it was Holy Spirit, whichever one you were having the hardest time connecting with, whichever one you had to go through and forgive right now, I want you to ask him this question. And when you hear an answer, everybody eyes closed, when you hear an answer, I want you to raise your hand, okay? I want you to ask whichever one of the, of the three of the Trinity was, I want you to ask him, what do you think about me? Father, what do you think about me? Holy Spirit, what do you think about me? Jesus, what do you think about me? I see hands starting to go up all over the place. See, you hear God's voice. You hear God's voice. And now he's giving you the truth what he thinks about you. You're coming to that moment where you're looking at the video of evidence and you're saying, wow, you really are good. You didn't do it. And it's restoring that intimacy back to that person of the Trinity. Who else? Who else? I see more hands. What do you think about me? See, because what he has to say is so good. He's always so good. But our wrong perception and and view and distorted view of, of him was not because of him. It was because of our heart wounds. So when you ask him, what do you think about me? You know, he'll tell you the truth and it'll be something amazing. And that will bring you closer to him. So God, I thank you this morning. I thank you. You're the perfect example of of healthy family, of perfect unity. And I thank you that this morning you're restoring in our hearts the fullness of your goodness. I thank you, you're healing hearts unlocking prisons, prison doors open through forgiveness this morning. I thank you, God, that that you're speaking to us and you're showing us what you think about us, what you say about us. Thank you for restoring intimacy. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you lead us to all truth. And so from this day on, we thank you We thank you that there is nothing holding us back from fellowshipping with Holy Spirit, with Jesus, with Father. That our hearts are healed. I 
thank you, God. I thank you for revealing truth. I thank you you're transforming us from the inside out today. We love you. We worship you. I'm going to ask the prayer team to come up front. And if you feel like um, you need a little extra time with this, a little help, I want you to come up here and let one of these guys pray with you. You know, maybe lead you into some prayer. Maybe you're like, I can't connect with them, you know. Um, these guys up here are amazing. And they will, they will help you pray through this because you know when you pray if you feel closer, if you feel connected. And when you ask them, what do you think about me? You know, it changes everything. What you thought, it changes everything. Stand up with me. Hmm. Just bless anybody. You see how God is good, only good, always good. And it's sometimes our distorted perceptions and our wounds that we have. And so this is called cultivating our heart, you know. God's so good. I just feel like it's just such a holy moment. <laughs> you know, because it's what it's like when there's uh, restoration happening. When restoration happens, it's... It's very deep. It's very emotional. It's very, I don't know how to say it, profound. So share with somebody what you experienced, okay? And, um, and, and let that now mark from now on. This is not just like, oh, Sunday's over. No, no, no. This needs to now bleed into your life in a different way, into your relationship, your intimacy with God, right? Into your worship, into your trust. You know, into your faith and all this stuff. Are you with me? Yes. God is so good. Lord, I thank you for everybody. I bless our church family, God. I thank you for the work you're doing in their hearts, God. And I thank you for clear understanding. I thank you, Lord, that all confusion goes away and only truth remains in our heart. Only your truth renews our mind and transforms our heart, God. So I thank you for breakthrough and victories in this day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hi, this is Pastor Ben Diaz. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube video. I hope it was a blessing to you. If it was, go ahead and give it a like and maybe share it with a friend. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive notifications when new videos come up or when we go live. Also, on the description below, you'll be able to find our social media pages, our website, and other resources that might be helpful for you. Have a good one.